Hi, I'm Maggie. Hi, I'm Grace. Hey guys, welcome back to a very bookish podcast. Today is episode 67, and we have a very, very special guest. We have the TikTok author sensation, Lauren Asher, on today. Welcome, Lauren. Hello, thank you for having me. I will never get used to that, but it always makes me smile. (laughs) Thank you for having me here. Yeah, of course. Of course, we had to have you on. Honestly, we've been wanting to have you on for quite some time because after um, we found you on TikTok and then we started reading your books, we honestly fell in love with just you and your whole vibe and just um, how much love and growth you've had on TikTok. And now we're finally here and now we finally get to talk with you. So it's, it's pretty awesome. Yay! Well, I'm equally excited to be here, and I, I've been following you both for a while, so I am just <laughs> ecstatic. That makes awesome. me giggle. Yes. <laughs> you know, like, the, the happy giggles a little bit, where you're like, oh, yeah. happy giggles. Um, yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, it definitely, it's honestly surreal that, like, we literally, I think it's been, like, I think when you first came out with the fine print, we were like, we need to have Lauren Asher on. Yep. And we were like waiting and I was like, I don't know how I would have reached out to her. And then <laughs> when I got in contact with Valentine PR, we saw you were on there and we were like, first one, we were like, Lauren Asher. I don't know <laughs> if she'll do it, but we have to have her on. So we were so excited to be able to talk to you because we've both been following you since I think last summer is when I started, when I got into mm-hmm. romance and reading the Formula One series. And I was just like, oh, the Dirty Air series was is how it started the journey yes my journey (laughs) my journey definitely and then Rowan came and I was just like oh you like stabbed me right in the heart I was like oh my man (laughs) he has my favorite name and everything and I was like oh I know I really love that name I know when I'm picking character names I'm always well there's one I have to think I'm like okay is there any chance I would name my future child this yes or no if it's like a possibility then I can't name them that (laughs) oh yeah it's always like a, a a kind of a hard line to cross because like you'll love a name so much but then it can't be something that you either are reading about in a romance kind of way because that's me with like sibling names oh yeah I read a book with like my sibling and he's like the romantic interest I'm like I'm sorry I no this is not it I can't read past that so names are either oh I can't either or like names that like my dad's name (laughs) oh yeah that's also another one it's just so hard and everybody can tell me oh the book is so great it's so spicy he's so sweet and I'm like I really don't want to read about that with I my really brother. can't either I really I it's like I can't even take myself somewhere else and both of my brothers um have like popular names like they were like trending for a while so oh, it just I gosh. felt like multiple books kept having and I'm like I just I can't read this like no matter how many people say it's amazing I'm just I can't get into it it's, if it's a spicy book and those are the books I read <laughs> oh, so yeah. I can't it's, it was just not it that's it's always a struggle but we move we move and we'll always find another name that is just this is too unique to ever be in my real life so we're safe with that right I think Rowan I have not met one in person so Mm -hmm. that's a safe one for me (laughs) yeah (laughs) I haven't either yeah especially I think because when I think of Rowan I associate it with the throne of glass series Mm -hmm. and Rowan being like my man from that series I love him to death it's like when I saw Rowan in the fine print I was like oh my gosh it's literally like YA my love of YA for Rowan mixed with spicy romance. Um, <laughs> yes, please. And someone I who's was, brunette. <laughs> uh, yes. I was like, oh, this is great. I, I need I a billionaire to fall in love with me too. I know. I, I do love, I did love the Throne of Glass series as well. Um, when I was looking up like Irish names and going mm-hmm. through a list, I was like, oh, these stick out to me. Or like, I kept like, Sometimes I'll write a book. This didn't happen with the fine print, but sometimes I'll write a book and change a character's name, like a certain amount of chapters in, because I'm like, it's just not working. I can do better or it's just not fitting their character anymore. So Mm -hmm. I feel that. Yeah. And like, usually when you do that, is like, do you end up starting off with the name first? Like, this is 
my when you're putting together a character or a love interest is the name like your first thing that you think of or do you start thinking about like other attributes and then try to find a name that fits him at least for the meantime that's a great question I feel like I pick main character names first Mm -hmm. that I have you know picked out and I'm like okay this is it um but then side characters sometimes I do like the same side character for each book and I'm like okay I'm gonna look up a name eventually I'm just like not ready to do it I'm already like in the zone so there'll be some times like I kept having multiple books I had like Jenny as a side character like that was just like the name that I kept picking yeah um and then I'd be like okay I gotta go like look this up eventually and find a better name um not that I I don't I I just had other jetties or I was gonna include one so Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's kind of like that or like Jenny is your Jane Doe (laughs) yeah exactly yeah I could use Jane Doe it's just then there's too many but I think like Cal's name the third Mm -hmm. brother third Kane brother he Mm -hmm. was like a different name and then I changed it like at the end of when I was of the fine print of like my first mm-hmm, job mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, okay that's interesting yeah yeah mm-hmm. usually um the name is like kind of like the footprint that like starts building the character so I'm like usually I'll see like the name when I'm reading and this will be before like the author starts describing how they look or anything and so if the name is like this like it just gives kind of like this vibe of like this dark, tall, handsome, broody type of man. That's already kind of like the vibe that he's giving just based off the name. So I think a name is super important. Mm -hmm. And it sometimes it's like the name doesn't really fit the person. But then so far, all of the names that you have pegged fit them very, very well. Oh, I'm glad. I mean, with names, so like when I did, you know, the Kane brothers, like middle names that they're like, kind of, they're like the, um, you know, the Knights of um, Arthur and the Round Table. (laughs) I thought it was like a silly way, you know, because you have this and it's just like these like really old, like types of names. And I'm like, well, that would be kind of fun, you know, fun backstory. Yeah, I love that. I always had a thing about like, the round table and and their names and then when I got to that part and I started hearing that all of them have the names I was like oh my gosh this is so cute <laughs> I love that piece so much I thought it was so cute and so like it just kind of fit them too because it's just like oh yeah I don't want to really tell anybody my middle name because it's, <laughs> it's not really but it just know. fits them so well. And then I you really have like Declan, that's like this ultimate broody, like not nice person. And then his middle name is like Lancelot. And it just Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. I absolutely loved it. It, it was absolutely perfect. It was so cool. What actually made you think of using the round table knights in their names? Oh my god. I feel like sometimes I choose things. It's like a fever dream. Um, <laughs> like when I tr- made that decision at the end of the night. Well, because she was very into, the the mother was very into like history. And I was like, what would a history buff be, you know, interested in? And I, and I was fast. I've always been like into, you know, just like it's, you know, King Arthur. It's kind of, it's not, I don't want to say mythology, but it's like folklore. And it's, you know, there's a lot of stories and I honestly don't know where it came out of more like my own curiosity and probably when I was doing all that Disney research and Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure Disney is the one that did the sword in the stone. Um, Yes, they did. Yeah. So I feel like when I was doing all of that background, I was like, oh yeah. Um, Yeah. And I know that was kind of about like the whole sword and who knows where I wish I could give you a clear answer. I feel like it's a bunch of things and probably staying up way too late. Got it. It was just one of those <laughs> things that just came to you. I like that though. It's very it worked. It's wholesome. It. I feel like it's so wholesome. I that's <laughs> that's my first thing is it's so wholesome. But so oh, we I'm kind glad. of we kind of understand that you're picking of your character and stuff, and we obviously know that you have the Dirty Air series. So like how did you when you came up with these series, were these planned for like 
did you have these planned out before you're like i want to write a formula one series or was it kind of like spontaneous where you were like i want to write well i guess that's the exact same way i said that, but like <laughs> did you plan out like writing the uh dirty air series like a year before or because you came mm -hmm. out during the pandemic or right before it in january mm -hmm. and so like what kind of like made you get into writing and how did you plan for these yeah um i will say i'm kind of a spontaneous person not like like i'm you know i like to plan but also i'm kind of like this like creative kind of just go with the flow as well it's like the weirdest kind of mixture so dirty year i didn't really plan to write this whole series i was watching drive to survive like the first season it had just like come out or it didn't just come out i i just started watching it before like it comes out before the next F1 season, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I started watching it. And on the last episode of that season, I was like, just, you know, watching my significant other. And I pull out my phone because I have this idea and I still kept it. It's a note on my phone. And it's like a one liner. And it just says like, you know, um, rivals teammate, you know, falls in love with rivals or teammate, you know, sister. And they happened to be rivals. Like it was really short and it stemmed from just seeing all like the contracts and kind of who was going to get a contract for the next year in formula one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I wanted the idea of the rivals and it kind of started as throttled. And I, when I was writing throttled, they said, you know what, like, if this is bad, then no problem. I just can quit. No one will know it's me. And, you know, I'll just like go about my normal business, you know, and then, if people want more and it's it's not as bad as I thought, then I'll keep writing. So I never planned to like continue the series unless I felt like it wasn't a bomb. Mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> Cause I was really scared. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it, it, it seemed to work and it was kind of in that phase of like where everybody, I feel like everybody was going in and out of the sports romance phase and I feel like they were looking for the next I guess sport to go into because like we had gone through hockey and we had a little bit of football and I feel like a lot of people were looking for like the next thing so it came out mm -hmm. right when like people were looking for something new so I feel like the timing was absolutely perfect for that which is is so funny because I, I did write that book I started it I wrote it really quickly. I think I started in the summer of 2019. And by the time you go through editing and, and beta readers and everything, like I didn't publish till January. And then the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. So I never knew, I didn't know Book Talk existed for a long time after Throttles came out. It might have not even really been as big back then. I'm not sure. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I kind of was like, you know, oh, people like sports romances, maybe they'll give Formula One a chance. And I was glad some people did. Yeah. And apparently a lot of people liked it so much that you ended up continuing the series <laughs> and you ended up doing another three books after that. And once, I guess, once you decided, well, it's working, let me continue. What was kind mm -hmm. of like your planning and your thought process between like whose book would come next, what stories I would next write um, mm -hmm. in the F1 series? Like, how did you plan that? So I always knew the order, you know, like in a hypothetical situation when I was writing Throttled. That's why I, I, I only thought it would be three books though. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was going to be Noah, Liam, and Jax. Like I thought that was going to be the three. Um, I never thought Santi would, would get his own book. Like maybe in the, you know, a small percent thought he could, so, you know, I gave him like a super great name, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in general, I never thought he would. So with Liam's book, like I knew that that book would go in the same time frame, you know, of like Noah's book, just because Maya met Sophie at the same time. Right. So I kind of like had that plan. So that's why I made them like, you know, about them a bit, but Jack's like, you know, him in throttled like I wanted you to meet everybody but you weren't always going to meet all the heroines or, or the you know love interests got it got it okay that's good though and I feel like you knew you knew that it would be a, a series and it was just we fingers crossed and then mm -hmm. it just like fell into place 
and it just worked out absolutely perfectly. Oh, thank you. Yes, I yeah. love um. Sorry. Oh, sorry, Maggie. Oh, I was just gonna say yeah. Especially <laughs> since you blew up on Book Talk, then it really, definitely just full throttled your career. I would say. <laughs> I see what you did there. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I really, I really, I, I, maybe it was kind of like a, a wishful thinking, right? You hope it works out. You hope it goes well, but I'm also like a, you know, I get a little anxious or by a little, I mean a lot. And <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, if it doesn't like the off chance, here you go. And, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm so appreciative of like, you know, the, the people on book talk, the people just in Twitter, Instagram, you know, everyone that supported from the beginning to the middle to now, uh, it wouldn't be what it is without them. Right. Yeah. And Amazing. When, <laughs> you, when you um, finish a series and you got to see like everyone excited for it, what are, do you have any moments where you were just like, wow, this actually happened or do you have any like moments like favorite how do I say this I guess reader experiences where like readers got to give you feedback or got to post about your books like what what are some of your favorite moments in mm -hmm. the time frame of the that series before your before the fine print came out oh my gosh that's such a good question that I don't think I've ever received before. Oh. Um, <laughs> I feel like the reader moments that are my favorite are, and it's not like a specific one I can pinpoint. There's two, but one is when I'm having a really tough time or when I'm doubting myself and I happen to fall upon something that like is positive or, you know, someone reaches out to me and says like how much, you know, my, my books meant to them or how much they love this character or whatnot it like really helps kind of boost me back up because there's good days and there's bad days or you come across something negative and it's hard or you just have self-doubt because you've decided to wake up that way that day. And I feel like readers just like, you know, whether it's a tagged post or a private message um, or a comment, like it just goes so far. And I do try to read a lot of them. Mm, yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, that's one. And then the second moment is just reading the messages of like, you know, from readers. They're kind mm -hmm. of two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely the support is definitely something that authors definitely need when it comes to producing content for readers and getting that like feedback of like, yeah, we like your stuff. <laughs> Keep writing. <laughs> but I kind of have a question of like, since you blew up mostly in two, 2021, that was only a year mm -hmm. ago. Now that I'm thinking about it, I was like, that's only a year ago. Um, <laughs> kind of the summer when like romance and smut talk were kind of honestly the explosion on TikTok mm -hmm. for romance books. How did that differ from when you like first started? Like, did you, when you first wrote um, Throttled versus when you started like the fine print, what were some kind of the things that you saw that were different from when you wrote your first book versus the first book in a new series? So I feel like for sure, no one knew who I was when I wrote Throttled. I feel like, and you know, only little by little, I, I grew. Um, so then by the time the fine print came out, I, I kept very hush about the fine print until like probably a month before release or maybe six weeks before, because I, I wasn't sure how people would react to it or people would be excited. I had written about Formula One. Now I'm writing about something like, you know, billionaires in, in a, uh, a very dreamland state of, you know, yeah. of theme parks. So mm -hmm. I knew it was a big shift. Um, and, you know, the readers that had supported me during Dirty Air, like they, they, I'm, a lot of them picked it up and gave it a chance. And then I grew a lot of readership from the Dreamland series that then wanted to give Formula One a chance. So I was lucky, like it kind of double dipped, I guess. But for sure, the releases were very different. Um, cause I feel like, uh, the excitement for the fine print just was bigger because I had built, you know, some, some good readers at that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, your process with this series, did you plan it out? Like this one, like you knew that you were going to end up writing the, the, the three yeah. of them, the three brothers. And did you kind of, 
what was your process of deciding kind of the order of which you would go? Like usually, you know, sometimes with um, brother series or sibling series, you'll go from the oldest or you'll go from the youngest um, and then kind of go in chronological order. And mm-hmm. yeah, you kind of <laughs> hop in in between. So how did you kind of settle on that choice? Yeah, honestly, I... I I wanted to do the younger one first kind of for what you're saying like a lot of times it's the older brother and I feel like people are so excited for the older brother or for like the broodiest brother and I was like you know like I want to write about this one this younger one that you know like his backstory like I, I wanted it to be at dreamland and I it, it just fell upon that I was like the youngest brother has like this type of backstory you know that he like he was kind of the dreamer, like it fits his personality and like how he would have disconnected from that, that I was like, oh, I want to pick him first and maybe have, because I knew that Declan, like I wanted him to, um, you know, be with his assistant, but I wanted you to see it first. Like I didn't want it to be like, that's the first thing that, you know, the first book you read and then maybe you'll start meeting the other characters. I thought like Rowan and Zara's book would be a good introduction to like the world. Got it, mm-hmm. got it, got it. You yeah. get that tension then, in yeah. the first book. You get yeah. the tension between the two of them, <laughs> the little looks and everything. I'm not going to spoil too much, but you get the little <laughs> looks and everything in the first book and you're like, mm, oh, I yeah. see what you're hinting at. I see what you're hinting at. I definitely I like that too, because like, well, you know, reading the series a little bit after already knowing the next book is is coming and who the mm-hmm. next book is going to be about. Um, and then reading this one and then kind of seeing the little moments, you're just like, oh, okay, I'm seeing it already. <laughs> and even with like the other brothers kind of reacting like, hmm, there's something. But of course, they're not going to speak on it because they're brothers and they're not they're they have a goal in mind and that's what they're doing but it was very very cute very very cute yeah I was like I love reading like breadcrumbs um and I feel like since with with Santi and Chloe's book in Redeemed Mm -hmm. you met Chloe in that book like you didn't get breadcrumbs same thing with I mean Jackson and Elena like you did have breadcrumbs but I enjoy them and I felt like oh I want to add that again I didn't expect the amount of people that would be so like you know, like savoring those breadcrumbs and then asking me like, oh, you had him put the this the food out right in front of her. And what does this mean? And oh my God, he's like in love with her. Yeah. <laughs> like I kind of knew what I was doing with that. Yeah. But um, like, I kind of didn't expect it regardless. Yeah. You're like, how yeah. did you catch on to that? I didn't even realize that. I definitely, that's, that's pretty. Yeah, like it was like the smallest things. And I'm like, I don't know. I think you like in, with Cal and Alana's book, the third one, like that has like conspiracy theories. And I'm like, oh. I don't oh. know, guys. <laughs> You're like, hmm, that is a good idea. You're like over here <laughs> taking notes like, oh, that's a good one. I should, I should I, can, <laughs> I can safely say that I, I did plan like I have those books kind of planned out like the rough plot so like when people say like oh is um I mean I'll say like a, a funny one it's not funny because it's you know people's theories and whatnot but it was like funny to me um because they were like oh my gosh there's a secret baby out there and like you know I'm like I I do I've read secret baby books I'm like I don't think that's where you know when I wrote that particular line like I don't think that's where I was going with it but I see your point um <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah great. sorry yeah, secret also. baby Dance. at least for the secret baby like there's a lot like you know there's like a four-year-old child out there or something that cal abandoned or, or you know is just not talking to yeah yeah that's yeah. so funny i <laughs> love that 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 readers are like always looking for the, the deeper means and i love that um authors get get to kind of see that and then they're, they're just kind of looking from a distance and being like oh you really <laughs> like this stuff, don't you? And it's just, it's really, I find that dynamic so funny because it's just like, you know everything that's going to go on. And mm-hmm. we're just here trying to connect dots. And sometimes we're way off base, but- I know, like, it is fun. But I have fun with readers. I'm like, okay, like in my group, I'll be like, tell me like what you think might happen in this book. Or like, I'll include a little bit of a scene and I'll be like, what do you think is going on here? Or 
you know, who said what? So like I asked them and I also asked them for their like craziest theories and, and we have fun with it. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I honestly think with like social media now these days, like it allows that like direct communication between an author and a reader and it allows for us to kind of like speculate because I love like I love messaging an author and being like, <laughs> so I see what you did on this page here. Or like I respond to them in a comment. I'm like, oh my gosh, I read this. I can't believe you've done that. And they're like, he 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 he. <laughs> Just wait till the next book. And I'm like, y'all can't do this to us. We're literally mm -hmm. grasping at crumbs. Anything you'll <laughs> give to us. Yeah, it's kind of evil in some ways. <laughs> it's so fun. I love yeah, that. Yeah, as I laugh. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a good time. You got to have fun with it. You put so much work into it. And I think I think some readers have awesome points or, you know, I'm like, wow, I can't believe you noticed that or, you know, like these little things um, like connections of Easter eggs or like things that, you know, they do pick up on the Easter eggs you leave behind. Yeah. And that's like, I guess, like the ultimate fulfillment is just like you put something down and somebody got to pick it up and somebody actually noticed it. So seeing kind of like your work, yes, your work as a whole gets to be enjoyed and loved, but then there are those few who really got to see that little piece that you were laying out for them and for those who were really looking into it. So I think that that's also like another type of connection that you get to have with your readers. And it's very sweet and endearing that you get to have that with them. Yeah, they're awesome. I can say that's like, that truly is like, the best part for me it's like the readers and like having that those relationships and just seeing you know how much a book can mean to someone or like how much they enjoyed it like I feel like that's what makes it fun for me is is mm -hmm. having that connection yeah yeah, yeah so kind of I'm kind of segueing this away <laughs> from the, talking about readers kind of more talk about you um which so you've talked about how like you did the Dirty Air series, which is a Formula One romance quartet, and now you have the um, oh gosh, I forgot what it's called. Um, you could tell which one's my favorite. <laughs> She's like, This is the series name, Dreamland. <laughs> I call it the Dreamland series, yeah, the it's Dreamland. okay. <laughs> um, the Dreamland series, which are completely not polar opposites, but one's Formula One racing. And then the other one's billionaires in a amusement park kind of set up scene um, and in the workplace. Do you have plans on maybe going another route for any other books? Or do you kind of want to stick to the billionaires and maybe or write other Formula One romances? I do love the billionaires. That's like a trope that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. So I definitely would want to go back to it because you have so much fun like they can go to all these places or they can be involved in all these different like jobs and everything that I'm like well that's kind of cool so I, I don't see myself ever giving it up I mm -hmm. do also um have plans to return back to like you know um formula racing and whatnot mm -hmm. so I think I don't have a solid like this is my next book after the third dreamland billionaires mm -hmm. but I'm kind of like I just have to finish that book before I commit to what's next. Like it could be the next book in, or well, I shouldn't say the next book, but a spinoff of, you know, the Dirty Air series with the kids. So the second gen, that could mm -hmm. be the next book I write, or it could be something completely different. Mm -hmm. Still in romance, but yeah. Oh, see, she's she's leaving us those breadcrumbs again. So already, I know, that already. was not on purpose. I promise. <laughs> I promise. It's more like, I'm like, listen, I really got to meet my deadline. I got to write this book, Lauren. You can't think of other things. I'm always like very one book at a time person, but also like if it's in a series, I'm thinking of the other books, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, so I have a question kind of going back to the Dreamland series. Um, are you uh, a big Disney person? <laughs> well, <laughs> I grew up in um, South Florida. So mm -hmm. always have been growing up around Disney. I used to have like annual passes back when I was way younger, not as much now that I'm, you know, a little older. So I've been to Disney countless times and to like, you know, the other universal and islands of adventure. 
you know, like the, the opposite of, of Disney World. So I did like enjoy all of my experiences there and I have so many memories. And um, I wanted to write a book in Florida and what happened with like the Disney was I, so since I'm from Florida, I get a lot of Facebook targeted ads of like oh, roller yeah. coaster videos. And oh, yeah. Yeah, so I kept watching these roller coaster videos, like these POV, like you're on the roller coaster. And yeah. then from there, it stemmed to, I started watching like Disney behind the scenes YouTube videos and like, theme park videos um and that's where like the whole story started evolving into what it became Mm -hmm. so um uh, let me warn you now I am a huge Disney person I am uh I always wanted to be uh an Imagineer and because I'm from south um California and um I go to Disneyland all the time. I do have an annual pass. And I I love watching all of those like behind the scenes documentaries. I like watching the Imagineers and how they set up the parks. What's their process between building land and all of these things. And so getting to see that Zara is essentially what in real world <laughs> would be that. I was like, wow, this is, this was it. This was meant for me. Allowed you to self-insert. It really did. It was like, it was ultimately me. And it's so funny because like, I'll have these conversations with friends and be like, oh, you know what would be great if they transform, if they fix this land and they did this or and they did this type of ride based on this and I'm always thinking about it and I'm all about that immersive experience of like how Disney kind of like transformed like when you're walking through it that it really makes you feel like you're in a different place Mm -hmm. and so then seeing Zara and her process and her like planning out things and like her ideas I was just in love and I absolutely (laughs) love that fact about her so it was definitely it definitely felt very targeted I was like oh this I wrote it for you Grace this it's so fascinating I agree with you I love watching like the Imagineer I mean Disney plus has this whole like series of Mm -hmm. behind the scenes yeah and it's so cool and I think you know it's like an art you know how they build these lands and um, I remember, you know, when they were building like the whole Star Wars galaxy down here and whatnot. And, and I just, I, it was all this stuff that I kept being bombarded with. And in my personal life, like you see people going to Disney, like it just was popping up in everywhere. Yeah. And I was like, how cool would it be to write about a fairy tale theme park, you know, for, for you know, everything and, and make it up? Cause it's not, you know, it's, it's different in some ways. Yeah, like it's, it's different. It's, like Dreamland's targeted, like it is family, but they also have like older, you know, rides. Like you could ride like fun, fun roller coasters. Like it was kind of like if I could build a my dream park, what would it be? I mean, the universe was really just giving you all those signs there. They were just like, it. you need to, you need to do this now, and you're like, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> but it, honestly, it was great. I really enjoyed it the okay. fine print is definitely for i like to say like it's like the romance book for disney adults where it's like <laughs> you, we all know those grace is a disney adult fyi I, I, um <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's definitely those people who like go to disneyland avidly but like want that romance of like working in the park and finding their one true love and everything because oh, yeah. i know grace i know grace would love that if she was yeah, able it to was do like that the, it was the perfect it was the perfect two tropes for me because it was like once giving me that like theme park um designer and that aspect of it and then it gave me the workplace romance which is, i'm a sucker for so i was just like this is it this is perfect the combo deal it was a combo yeah. deal i feel i feel the same way i was like how fun would it be, you know, to fall in love at, you know, a, a fairy tale theme park and like yeah. behind the scenes and everything. So, oh yeah, I'm glad it, I'm glad it worked. It did, mm-hmm. it did. It, it did, it really did. felt the magic through. through. <laughs> so when, obviously you love the um, workplace romance, what are other, some of your other like tropes that 
writing are your favorite or even reading that are your like favorite books to read what kind of tropes I feel like I have strayed so far from contemporary romance once I started writing. Um, (laughs) That's one thing that it's hard when you, when I write contemporary, I don't want to be like influenced by contemporary. So I read a lot of like more fantasy Mm sci-fi, like, you know, Ruby Dixon when she was becoming, um, I mean, she's, she's been big, but when like uh, Ice Planet Barbarians blew up, I was Mm -hmm, like that's my stuff like I'm glad people are like you know finding out about Ruby I'm like (laughs) (laughs) those books were fun yeah so I read a lot of like those things um to be honest Mm -hmm. wow I honestly would have never expected that that you like I split up barbarians it's the first (laughs) honestly I love I I love those that series that series is addicting reading it with the audiobooks and just like being able to read those yeah, I my library, thankfully, public library has them all on like e versions on um uh audio. So I literally would just oh. do Kindle Unlimited and I would literally check out one audio, two audiobooks, three audiobooks a day, and then I would just listen to like three books in a day because I literally oh, that's at, so like three cool. X speed. It was I love the Ice Planet Barbarian series is just <laughs> Well, if you like Ice Planet of Barbarians, then, and I don't know if you've read this series, but the Zoe Draven Ford King series. I've gotten that one recommended to me a lot. I definitely, I'm more in my contemporary phase at the moment. Oh, you're in the contemporary era. Okay. Yeah, but I was in my, like, I want to get back into, like, the monster alien. Um, Katie Roberts uh, just came out with her uh, Dragon's Bride book. That oh, yes, looks, I read that one. Mm-hmm. It looks good. And I'm just like, <laughs> it was good. I'm like, and I've seen some of the fan art for it that she posted, the Not Safe for Work one. And I'm like, hmm. Oh, my God. Maybe, yes. maybe I got to read it. <laughs> yeah, I read all of those types of books. I enjoy them because, um, like, I want quick reads and something that's very like it's just so different than writing about like real world um like contemporary stuff even though they have they hit really good topics like it's just more of like I'm on a planet somewhere I'm in a spaceship not that I would ever want to be in a spaceship that's honestly a fear of mine (laughs) (laughs) let's you escape it's the it's a deep form of escapism to go onto another planet and right read about yeah blue alien. you can't get farther right you can't get farther than that honestly yeah you know yeah no I get that <laughs> yeah but are there any authors besides like Ruby Dixon maybe like from your childhood that really like prompted you to become a writer and like want to become an author um I feel like from my childhood Probably not, but I know authors that really like fed that love for reading. Mm-hmm. And I will say that, so this is like a funny story. So um, I have I went to, you know, Catholic school throughout my, you know, upbringing. And when I was trying to get into like, you know, Catholic high schools, my grandma would, you know, take me to church. Like we had to go to church on Sundays. And I said, that's fine. But I want to go to either the Barnes and Noble near the church or the library after. (laughs) (laughs) And that was our deal. I would go to mass if they took me to, um, to go read afterwards. So, um, basically that was how I like became this like voracious reader. Like I always loved reading, but I would walk out of the library with like a stack of Nancy Drew books. Like if you could rent out like 10 books at a time, that's how many I rented out. And Mm -hmm. I would just binge them. And then it became like reading about like the Hardy Boys and just, you know, that was like when I was much younger. And then it kind of eventually a long, long time after became like steamy romance books. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, I should have done that with my Nana and have like convinced her. She's also Catholic. I'm I'm not Catholic, but she's hardcore Catholic (laughs) and tried to get me to go to mass multiple times. Maybe I should have used the Barnes and Noble trick too, because maybe, I, maybe, maybe then I would have gone to mass more often. I was like, if I have to sit through this for an hour, then you have to let me go to to get a book or something. I need, I need, I need some positive like reinforcement here. So, younger you was really thinking the right path to take. 
right I was hustling since a young age so I really (laughs) you know so that's why and then I remember when I was um a little bit older and then at that same um Catholic school (laughs) I brought 50 shades of gray to read during my my off time (laughs) you did not um, I did I did I did and you know, it was like, when you're done with your assignment, you could do something on your free time. So some kids go on their phones, me, I pull out like the 50 shades of gray (sighs) paperback. I had no shame at like 16 or something, whatever. And yeah, my teacher then walks up to my desk and he like taps the cover and I'll never forget it. He goes like, is this something appropriate for what we would read in school? And I died. (laughs) Oh my (laughs) God. That's hilarious. I would not be that bold. I am, I'm, oof. How are you? Me could ever. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't, I don't know what I was possibly thinking. I mean, looking back on it, I'm embarrassed for myself. Like I have <laughs> secondhand embarrassment just from the memory. Um, because same, same token, like my dad then asked me in the car one day, he's like, so I saw those books you were reading and I asked my, like the person I work with about them. And she told me about them. <laughs> oh no. I learned my lesson after that. That was like when I realized, listen, spicy books, I guess like I need to go invest in an iPad or something. Yep. It. It's always the people outside the the friends and the family friends that end up like ratting you out and being like, look, that book is, is really spicy. If it were me and I saw, you know, my friend's daughters reading something, and of course they're a little older. They're not like 12 mm-hmm. and reading that stuff, but you know, right, right, right. they're at an age where, you know, that's appropriate-ish, you know, I'm going to be like, oh yeah. I've read that book before. It's pretty good, huh? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And we have that like, I, me, and we just like, we both know that we know that we know. Oh, yeah. And it's just like, I'm keeping it. You want to be the cool person, right? You don't want to shame people. I think it's good. I think it's good to like explore, you know, just like what's out there. Like if you're reading it, you know, it doesn't have to be Fifty Shades of Grey. It can just be just like a contemporary romance. And not that that's not contemporary, but more like less, you know, spicy, like a good mm-hmm. entry point to spicy romance. And I think it's it's kind of good knowledge because if not, you're, I don't know where you learn this stuff. I mean, people watch HBO and and that has some content on it. I think. <laughs> oh yeah, like, Game of Thrones. Well, really. <laughs> right, right, we're we're reading. <laughs> the ring yeah, exactly. exactly sometimes you gotta like p- kids are gonna and and I think kids like as like people under 18 but they're gonna explore their like sexuality and whatnot and I think you know a book is is a safe bet definitely and it's definitely better and like you know that's where most of us find out stuff I mean you know guys have their way of figuring out <laughs> things why can't we you know it just it just seems fair it just seems love the know. subtle hinting grace love the <laughs> subtle hinting. <laughs> well I feel like in college I was so like I didn't tell anyone I read these books and and even afterward I was so much more private and now I'm just like oh yeah like you know I might I just you know I'll tell people like yeah I read romance like you know because some people don't know that what I do and I'm just like yeah like I read books and you know um one of a person I I, um I'm close with she was talking about like Colleen Hoover's Verity and she was like yeah you know like there were some scenes in there that were spicy and I just start like (laughs) laughing to myself (laughs) you're just like oh really Mm -hmm. because she seemed she she had like not read books like that before and it was her first like Colleen Hoover book and everything and and we were discussing and I was like talking because I I really you know love like watching Colleen Hoover and everything and and I haven't read that book but like I know I've heard of the plot twists and everything and I won't say them and whatnot but I was just like so fascinated talking to her because then I was like oh have you read other like books with like spicy stuff and she was like no not really and I just was like giggling to myself (laughs) (laughs) Verity is actually, I have a funny story with that book. I, I go to university currently. Um, I'm going to be in grad school in the fall. But um, oh, thank you. It's, it's been tough. <laughs> um, it's been a rough year. Um, but I was, 
we have a Starbucks on campus and I was standing at the Starbucks reading Verity. And like Verity is like, you know, it's more of a mystery thriller than it is mm -hmm. like a spicy romance. Um, there is some subplot of that, but it's mostly a mystery thriller. Right. And I was reading it and like this guy, one of my friends comes up to me and he's like, are you sure you should be reading that in public? And I was like, oh my God, how do you know? I was like, <laughs> he follows me on TikTok. So he's seen the kind of like books that I read and like the content that I talk about and stuff. And I like turned um. to him and <laughs> all these other people are like, at, waiting in for their like Starbucks too, and they all turn to him too. And I'm just like, I'm like, ah, I can't believe you just said that. I was like, um, for your information, this is a mystery thriller, sir. It's not a romance <laughs> book. He's like, could have fooled me. What's under that cover? And I was like, <laughs> sir, <laughs> Verity, I have not finished the book. I might DNF it, but yeah. <laughs> that book and I have some drama with that book <laughs> well um, you're explaining you're explaining the content I think it's it's funny that people will want to assume every book you're going to read now is a spicy book and yeah. not that I love a lot of my books to have like some kind of like spice in them I just I like it for relationship development it's just like a personal choice um mm -hmm. but you know like I hope we get to the era that we don't have to shame people for reading whatever they want to read whether it's spicy whether it's a thriller a day or whatever you know you're into um yeah I hope so yeah I definitely think with like book talk and oh my god my sister is just banging around in a room sorry my sister <laughs> I can't hear it yeah sorry I can hear it and it's really loud um I'm sorry <laughs> I'm in my closet because I'm at my parents house so I'm in the <laughs> closet like on the floor recording this but um with I think with book talk and like smut talk in general like in like bookstagram as well i feel like finding the community of like people who like support you in reading romance and like how like romance has always had this like negative connotation around it for like the last 10 years and then really in the last year i felt like people finally understood even outside of people who read romance like even booksellers when i would work with them and they realized that last summer sales grew by 300 percent like how much romance in the book world was like how big it was and like how like everybody loves romance i mean not everybody correct that but i A think the portion yeah i would yeah. say like the influence of book talk really showed like people like it's okay to like read romance and it's okay to love romance and you know it's okay to read the spicy straight smut no plot i'll do it too it's my favorite <laughs> i love that stuff but i definitely think book talk the power of book talk really smut talk specifically has very much powered that pro romance yeah hill that we're on right now mm -hmm. oh for sure for sure and it makes people more comfortable to talk about it like i do talk about um like the books with my significant other now like i'm so much more vocal um and i think that happened once i really started writing too because i would be like you know, I'm reading, but I wouldn't tell them what I'm reading. And now I'll be like, oh my God, this scene happened. Or like, these people said this, can you believe it? <laughs> or I'll send him something I wrote. He doesn't read my books, but I sent him like something I wrote um, that was very like scandalous. And he was like, I can't believe <laughs> you wrote that. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> I definitely, I kind of grace and I have talked about this where like, we're both single. I'm calling us out. We've talked about this multiple times. We're both single. Yeah. We're both on the market. Me, my, <laughs> my, my shit's complicated. I don't, I can't flirt. The amount of romance books and stuff I read, I just can't flirt. I'm neurodivergent. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't help me any what way to read romance. But um, we were talking about how like, we've always wanted like our significant other to read like our favorite spicy scene. <laughs> <laughs> so at least it know what we expect a little bit or at least our favorite romance book because it's like hey read this and you'll understand my brain and I definitely have thought about that with like the fine print because I love the fine print too and I was like oh, oh. we'll role well, play as a Rowan I just need the guy to <laughs> role play as Rowan for me please <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> yeah I mean you could there there's some good scenes in there that you can choose I feel I feel the same way I've, I've joked like one day you'll you'll read a book I don't know which one but well I'll um my significant other and I have a deal like I'll let him 
read a book one day that I wrote, but I get to pick the book. Ah. Yeah. So you haven't selected the book yet for them to read. No, I feel like it would be if I had to pick, I feel like it would be like redeemed or wrecked if I had mm-hmm. to choose because he does like Formula One as well. Mm-hmm. But maybe it's a different one one day. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. There, Keep it in your back pocket for now. This right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, ooh, quick question with the F1 mm-hmm. stuff. Um, have you guys gone to go see any races like in person? Oh my gosh, Grace. I wish um, oh, because man. the Miami GP was this like not last weekend, but the weekend before. Mm-hmm. And I was so tempted to go. I've, I've never felt such a temptation quite like that. But we decided not to go to it. And um, we are kind of just like hoping that we can go to um, either one in Europe mm-hmm. or uh, the Las Vegas one I'm kind of interested in that they're going to come out with. Yeah, my brother recently got and kind of got into that, and he started looking at some kind of some some races that we could possibly go to, and I was just like, oh, you know, I've read a few books <laughs> about it, so I might know a few things, and uh, it piqued my interest. So I was just like, oh, I'm down to go with you, and then we saw the the Vegas one, and so we were just like, you know what, that might be the one that it's close. It right not too close. far it is close so I was just like you know what it might be the one so yes. we'll see how that goes but and Vegas is fun I don't know if either of you've been but it is I I liked it I, had I have been once I didn't like my experience there but mostly because we didn't really do anything oh. um we went it was for my aunt's birthday and we just went just to kind of like she wanted to go to a couple casinos and things like that and so I was just like okay this is fine for my first time I don't want to go like way too crazy and so it was it was okay (laughs) I feel like it's definitely like user error kind of going you gotta kind of have an idea of what you want to do yes the food is good oh yeah Um, the the food food is good yeah yeah and then the I do like going to the casino but only in that case like um so I feel weird calling him my sitting brother I could say like Mr. Asher or something but yeah. we're not married um but either way he was like so scared I was gonna dislike Vegas and mm-hmm. when I ended up being like oh my god this is so fun and wow like I really enjoy going to the different hotels and everything and the food and he was like wow I did not see that coming whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> you're just like oh yeah you're gonna have to like drag me away now I know I was like sad to go I was like this is such a good end to we did a trip like um in Arizona Utah and then we ended in Vegas and I was like this is you know so awesome I could stay here and um yeah it's it's funny because like I'm not like into you know Miami has like a big nightlife scene and stuff and I, I'm not into that but in yeah. Vegas I was like woo. <laughs> this is my time to shine I definitely feel that yeah away from home get to break free of the cage and just I've never been to Vegas I just turned 21 this year so I have not had time with school and everything to go to Vegas but that's definitely I want to go with Grace because Grace talked about how she didn't like going to Vegas and I was like "Mm, you know what that means I'm gonna I'm gonna fly down to well, because I'm in I'm in Omaha, Nebraska. Oh uh, yeah, I, yeah. So it's like I, I'm butt fuck nowhere is what I like to say. <laughs> Excuse my language. We curse on this, but I'm literally in the middle of the country, nowhere, population less than a million. My favorite place to go is Target. So it really tells you. Hey, that's a good a place. Lot. That's a good place to go. That not for my bank place. account. Not for my bank account. It's not. <laughs> but I definitely want to go to Vegas and they have like after I think last year I think I was reading the uh, Dirty Air series and my dad was talking about how we could go to Vegas for my 21st birthday and I was like you know what we should do we should drive cars like they have like like the Lambos and like all the like Corvettes and stuff that you can drive oh you're fancy Um, yes I wanted to go on like I wanted to go on like the racetrack and I was like this is something I want to do for my birthday is like because I'm like a fast driver. I'm from Texas. We drive fast. It's it's just something we do. And I'm like, I want to like 
I want to, I want to hit like 200 or at least try to. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. That's so, Definitely. so fast. Yeah. I, I don't think you can actually hit it, but like, I want to hit like 140, Close. 160. And I mean, that's, that's yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a still, crazy fast. Yeah. That's a, <laughs> that's, still, that's a goal of mine. Uh, you know. Grace is kind of like maybe I should never drive in a car with Maggie. <laughs> That's what. Yeah. It's good thing when when you visited me that I was the one driving because who girl, uh, I thought I drove fast. <laughs> I mean, well, I have I a little comment. Corolla. It's fine. Oh, oh my god, yeah. I used to drive. Well, I had like a a Kia Soul for a while, and that was funny. Like if you hit like past 70 like your your windows are shaking oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah I, I have, drive like, a different car now but yeah yeah my car my tw- my little Toyota Corolla is like 109 horsepower and I still drive that thing like <laughs> like my dad's car I'm like I'm swerving through I, I don't swerve I like speed I like to go at least five five ten miles over the speed limit other people oh, do that's, not that's okay yeah that's like normal here yeah yeah, that's, you I, know the speed limit's a suggestion. Yeah. That's what I like to say. That's that's <laughs> it's that's what I like not to say. really a speed limit, more as like the minimum to actually flow. Okay, we're that's trying true. to get somewhere. We're not here just to sightsee. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. That. Like either that or move to the right lane at that exactly. point. You know, like I don't mind as long as you're go- like if you're going the speed limit in the left lane, like that's you're asking for a honk horn or something. Exactly. But, you know, like I can respect it in the right lane, the middle lane. Um, but I'm from, again, I'm from, I'm from Miami. So we just have like some of the craziest driving <laughs> yeah. you can possibly have. Plus it's like a hurricane outside and you're driving. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, driving is, it's very different when you go to different states, especially in the middle, mid states. It's just not the same (laughs) it's 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 an experience that everyone should uh should have driving in a different state to see what it's really like oh yeah yeah Yeah. or if there's like hills or curves yeah yeah yep oh yeah I've driven in Colorado um that's where I got my driver's license and I had to learn how to drive in the mountain so yeah I've lived places (laughs) I've lived in the midwest it's not that Talk about stressful. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Definitely. yeah. When I got my driver's license, I will never forget this. One of the first questions they asked me was, or like when you're, you know, doing the whole test part, they go, so how would you park if you're on a hill? And I like, I'm like on a hill. The only hills we have here are like the trash compost places. Like, <laughs> what do you mean if I park on a hill? Like, like I was so confused and I gave an answer because we went on the trip to California and I was like I think I remember how they parked I didn't even drive in California like because there's hills there all right and curves Mm -hmm. but yeah so I I gave an answer but I'll never forget that because I was like we don't have that here no yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) e-brake I I just use the brake that's how I park on a hill just park and brake you turn (laughs) away Look, I'm gonna I'm tell you guys because I'm from <laughs> so I know. Grace, Grace is the ideal candidate for this interview question. I, I know. Like, I failed it. <laughs> I know. You see, what you do is is that you park close to the curb and you turn away from the curb if you are parked uphill, where you're like facing uphill, and if you're facing downhill, you turn your wheel to the curb. If that makes sense. I never learned this. I never learned this. Well, you, you, if you live in a flat state, you don't really need to know. But if you right. live in California, you don't. <laughs> you know, altitudes are all different. There's hills everywhere. So you do need to know it. So for, for those listeners who don't know or who are going to take their driver's <laughs> test again or, you know, something, drive. And when you park facing uphill, you turn your wheel away from the curb. So if you if your brakes fail and your car gets pulled and it starts going downhill, it will go down and the angle will make the wheel go right into the curb. So if you're facing uphill, turn away. If you're facing downhill, turn to the curb. Look at that. There you go. 
There you go. Look at that. You learned That's something. A very today. smart answer. Me, right. I would just say right. e-break. Just use the break. <laughs> Just pull yeah, that, you, pull, you do that pull too. That you do, that. yeah. Grace is like, whoa, 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 whoa. You, 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 you put it, you put it in part. The emergency break too, but you also turn your wheels, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. See, like now you can say we talked about books, we talked about Vegas, and we talked about driving lessons. Like, exactly. what? Yeah. What more can you ask? For? <laughs> got a whole trifecta here right it's like I and with cars like I do love cars not that I drive I, I don't know if I could ever drive 140 miles an hour Maggie I think I'd be scared and also like throw up but um <laughs> maybe one day <laughs> um but yeah I, I just love talking about that so I've told everyone I'm like this is I this is how you're supposed to park on a hill because I googled it Grace one time I was so flabbergasted that they asked me about it <laughs> that I was like insulted that I didn't know <laughs> well now you you ended up finding out and so you had that I feel like I, I still got the wrong answer though I thought it was like you know toward the curb <laughs> no. uh, it's okay you'll figure it out when it happens it'll just come to you in that moment and you'll just right in a panic in a full-blown panic in <laughs> California or Colorado you just send me a message and I'll and I'll just tell you okay this is how you turn it it's okay don't worry I got you I got you I love it. If anybody needs in information on how to park, just text, e email Grace or DM <laughs> Grace. Yep. Just but please me. do it with like 24 hour notice. You know, don't be like in the panic. And be yeah. like, Grace, sell me out. Because who knows? I might be like, you know, taking a bath. I might be in the bathroom. <laughs> you never know. Right. For legal <laughs> liability purposes, you got to like <laughs> disclose that information. <laughs> yeah. Google where you're heading. Find a parking spot before you even take off to drive, and then scope I'll get the scene out. Scope yeah. the wow! Scene out. Look at that! Look at that! Yeah. <laughs> well, I think this is a perfect place to end for the day. Thank you so much, Lauren, for coming on. <laughs> Grace can't stop laughing. She just <laughs> Grace laughs, which makes me laugh in turn. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just good. I thought that was, it's just so funny uh but yes <laughs> we have had so much fun as you can clearly hear uh Aww, discussing all, yeah. of, all of these things um it has been absolutely awesome to have you on and um thank you for agreeing to come on and chat with us for a little bit it has been so awesome again so thank you well thank you for having me and i had an awesome time i laughed an absolute ton and yes. i i appreciate being invited and and please do it again one day yeah. yes and yeah. thank you to all of our listeners who are listening now and who have thankfully supported us and allowed us to get to this level to talk with the tiktok sensation and we are so excited to have this go out um for our listeners they we have some good supporter listeners, so hopefully they actually take into account the driving lessons that we have taught. Go five <laughs> miles over the speed limit and park towards the curb when you're facing downhill. See? Oh, absolutely. Oh, oh wow. Yes, Look yes at you. you did it. You did I did it, Grace. <laughs> it stuck with me. It stuck with me. <laughs> I was about to say, uh, okay, okay, you, yeah, you got you the last part. It. You saved yourself with the last part. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah, it I been yeah, right. She was saying when you park down, and then you're supposed to go the other way, away from the curb when you park up, and the emergency brake. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot That's... the emergency brake. Definitely put a brake. <laughs> it's okay. Well, <laughs> you're good. Um, well, make sure uh, to all of our listeners, if you haven't read either of Lauren Asher's series, make sure you do go check and check them out. They are available on Kindle Unlimited. And as always, you can purchase them on her website, which we will link um, below. And yeah. Yeah. Anyways. We'll go ahead and see y'all next week. We don't have a topic, so don't expect much um, well, from us. <laughs> we'll toss a coin and see where we're at. Yeah, we'll toss a coin and see where we're at. So thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Lauren, for coming on. And we will see y'all next week. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.